The date is now the 8th of December, really not very many days until we reach the end of the transition period and we still don't know if there will be a deal or not. If there were to be no deal, Adam, paint us a picture, if you could, of January the 1st or maybe it's January the 4th when that reality bites, of, of how different or how much chaos there would be for UK business as a result. Well, I mean, the business priority right now, Anna, is clear and precise information. Uh, we've been saying that for four years now. We've been saying it through the negotiations. And whether they end in a deal or in a no-deal scenario, we still need that clarity and that precision. That's on UK government. A lot of the information that businesses need in order to trade across borders simply isn't there yet. And, of course, there are also a lot of systems that have to come online, too, uh, that the UK government is still working to bring in. So trading goods across borders, um, people attempting to execute contracts in the services industry or figure out where they pay VAT, questions about what happens with data that you hold in one country and need to send to another. All of these things are up in the air for the 1st of January. And that's why so many businesses would prefer a deal even at this late stage. Uh, so it, the fact that the businesses are, don't have the information they need to prepare then, Adam, is that because the decisions have not been made or is it because the decisions have not been made public or is there just not the detail behind previously made decisions to enable businesses to prepare? Really, it's a mixture of all three of those things. We recognize that a few of the things that businesses are looking for are caught up in the negotiations. Of course, businesses are frustrated that we're still in that negotiations phase so close to the end of transition. But many of the issues where businesses require precision are things where the UK government has uh, the power in its own hands to give them that information, and it has not done so yet. And we have gone through a list of 35 core business areas at the Chambers of Commerce, and in those 24 of them, we still have incomplete information. That is a recipe for difficulty in doing businesses across borders. So there is a big burden here on the government of the United Kingdom to provide clarity, to provide that sharpness on the nuts and bolts of doing business around the world. You may not get that. I wonder, Adam, if uh, uh, what businesses have done to make sure they have enough raw materials to produce the things manufactured in the UK, ha have they stockpiled that? And what about purchasers outside of the UK? I mean, if you want something from Great Britain uh, and you're sitting in Europe, I guess you better buy it now, even if you don't plan on needing it until next year, right? We are seeing some evidence of stockpiling or people taking advanced decisions. But you also have to remember that a lot of businesses have seen enormous hits to their cash position during the COVID pandemic. And many of those that would be stockpiling right now in the uh, advance of uh, a change in trade aren't really able to do so at this moment in time because they're focused on surviving uh, having taken such a big cash hit. So it's a mixed picture out there. Uh, many businesses that are in really integrated continental supply chains, like in the automotive or aerospace industry, you know, they've certainly done their very best to prepare, but there's only so far you can go. And eventually those supply chains that cross borders are going to have to work. Otherwise, production could grind to a halt. Just quickly switching from Brexit to the virus, because you mentioned survival, Adam, I wonder, the businesses you represent, are they getting the help they need to make it through the lockdowns that we're seeing? I think the biggest thing that they could have to help them is a sense that the UK government is doing everything in its power to help them open and trade successfully. Uh, whilst we've welcomed a lot of the fiscal support and monetary support that's gone into the system over the past year, the simple fact of the matter is there's no substitute for an open and functioning economy. No amount of fiscal support could ever make up for that. So it, if, if we keep having lights on lights off type lockdowns, um, which of course caused many businesses to seize up and some to stop trading altogether, that would be the most damaging thing we could see. We now need to see a forward path so that businesses can reopen and can trade successfully.
if Prime Minister Johnson and his team, Adam, back to the Brexit uh, negotiations, are, are, are still thinking about how close they can bear to stay to EU rules to guarantee access to EU markets, what would be the priority for business, do you think, Adam, with the clock ticking and not many days to go until the end of the transition? Well, the, the priority for business would be for the two sides to reach some form of accommodation and agreement, whether that be on uh, the level playing field question or on the state aid question. Um, we do see so much trade and so much integrated trade between the UK and Europe that it would be a pity for the two sides after four years and so much detailed work simply to walk away from the table and say, we're not going to do this. It's now in the hands of the politicians. The negotiators have done what they can. Um, and we need those politicians to make decisive steps forward over the coming days uh, because businesses have very little time left now to prepare. Uh, and they're going to need some easements, I think, into the new year if the two sides reach a deal so that uh, they can inch their way towards this new relationship rather than have it hit them at 100 miles an hour.